Hello, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and from unboxings.com and here I have the Samsung Wave or the S8500. I'm going to do a quick unboxing video for you, check it out and uh, hopefully do a little de bit of a demo for you uh, once we actually have it all out of the box. Uh, everybody seems to be going for this fairly minimalist um, sort of box packaging design, uh, seems to be sort of following after um, HTC I think were the first to do this, so um, minimising their packaging, so I suppose that's kind of a good thing uh, at the moment in this sort of uh, day and age if you like so handset itself is immediately on top we first saw this at MWC uh, in uh, February of this year so it's taken a little while for it actually to make it to uh, market but nevertheless we have it now so handset on top we we'll come back to it in a second see what else is in the box um, something in this top portion which we'll need to take a look at and that looks like the yep you got so we've got the user manual there which uh is fairly hefty reading actually it's not as lightweight as some of the others we're seeing at the moment uh getting more from your handset with samsung apps and our international warranty card information there getting to know your wave well i guess this is kind of your getting started guide it covers sort of uh, the basics uh, and getting you up and running so uh, uh, you'll probably at the minimum want to have a look through that um, and it's nicely presented in colour which is always a bonus when you're sort of trying to work through anything that seems to be all we have in that sort of top portion we then get to the accessories so we have a wired headset which has a four pole three and a half mil jack on the one end so that does mean we can use our own headphones if we choose to uh, then we have an inline microphone with just a single push button, no volume control, but there is the microphone just on the back there. And then the headphones themselves, which are pretty decent. I've uh, had these on another Samsung handset not so long ago, and they are pretty decent in-ear style headphones. So I dare say you'll probably want to use your own though. So we have uh, then a USB to micro USB sync charge cable. We then also have a micro USB style charger, wall charger. Um, quite like the fact that uh, the wall charger does not require the sync charge cable, so you can either leave the sync charge cable plugged into your PC and you can separately use this wall charger, so that's pretty good. I know some other manufacturers don't give you that option. You have to use uh, sync charge um, with the wall charger. And then we have the battery, so let's take a look at the battery. We're obviously going to need that in just a moment. The battery is uh, 1500 milliamp hours. Um, not bad, it's not as heavy or as uh, thick and large as I would expect for a 1500. So, coming back to the handset itself, it's kind of in a little plastic bag there. And on the front, it tells us kind of some of the bits we need to know. It uh, obviously is the Wave, has uh, one of these Super AMO LED screens, it has the badder or BADA, BADA, BADA operating system, which uh, is totally unique at the moment to Samsung, and this is the first to have it. So uh, it's their own, and it's not Android or Windows Mobile or anything else. It is BADA. Uh, it's one gigahertz processor, has GPS and Wi-Fi. So on the front, we have a 3.3 inch display, which is 800 by 480 pixels, uh, which is WVGA. Let's uh, say so 3.3 inch Super AMO LED. We have a forward-facing VGA camera for kind of your video conferencing, that kind of stuff, and video calling. A couple of little sensors there, not sure if you can really make them out, but that's sort of for ambient light and proximity. Below the screen, we have a couple of keys. We have a, basically a menu button in the centre there, one push button. It isn't an up-down rocker as far as uh, I can really tell, it just seems to be a push. And then on either side, kind of your phone keys, so uh, you're answering, you hang up your calls, or make and uh, break the call, if you like. Up and down volume control, well, that's pretty standard to have it on the left-hand side, uh, in that position, just under your thumb when you're actually in call. So that's an up and down volume control rocker there. Nothing really to see on the bottom, with the exception of the microphone hole. On the right-hand side, well, we do appear to have a dedicated camera button, and also what looks to be um, basically a lock button uh, which may or may not double as the power button, unsure at the moment. Uh, on the top we have what looks to be like a little loudspeaker grill, we have the 3.5mm headphone socket for plugging in, uh, well obviously headphones or the wired headset that's supplied and then we have a little cover 
as you can see there, over the micro USB sync charge connector and the cover is completely captive not terribly fiddly, it's at least not one of these ones that's sort of on a plastic springy thing where you have to use kind of two hands to sort of make the connection so that's pretty good, it also stopped that getting clogged up with dust and debris on the back, well we have a little um, sort of plastic cover there so we just peel that off so that we can uh, see it as best as possible it is a 5 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash and uh, that will also record video uh, I believe that will record uh, 720p video so that's pretty decent I'll confirm that when we actually come to do the review I might be making it up and uh, that's about it for for the back well, obviously we have the back compartment you'll notice the back I don't know if it really sort of you can make it out in the video here uh, but it's like a brushed aluminium finish it sort of seems fairly robust and the actual overall design that is carried around the outside this sort of brushed finish uh, back cover releases like so, and as I say, being an aluminium cover, it's quite robust and kind of feels well made. Micro SD card slot is just underneath here, so we'll obviously just release that. And then we have a SIM card socket just uh, just underneath there also. Battery pops in like so, and uh, we won't worry with a SIM card or a micro SD card just at the moment. And that all pops put together there. You notice there's also an eyelet here so that we can actually connect a phone charm or a lanyard if that's you know, really something you want to do. So let's see if we can power up. There we go, and while we wait for that to turn on, let me just run down the rest of the spec. As I've already mentioned, it is the better operating system with a 1 GHz processor. Samsung Wave or GT8500 or S8500, it's being sort of branded as elsewhere. 3.3 inch display, quad band for GSM and dual band for HSDPA. It's gonna work most places that you take it if you're on holiday or roaming or whatever else. It's going to work pretty much most places. This particular one is a SIM-free version. Comes from this particular one was supplied by our friends over at Clove Technology. So this is available SIM-free and also available on the Vodafone network. But uh, uh, SIM-free, you can also use it uh, with that effectively whatever SIM card you like. Uh, and this one actually comes in at just uh, just over three hundred and twenty pounds. So pretty decent for the spec that you're getting from from um, a handset like this. It is pretty high end. Uh, it does have built-in GPS with assisted GPS, as I say, 3.5mm headphone socket we've already mentioned. Uh, micro SD card will support up to 32 gig. Uh, TouchWiz 3.0, which we're going to take a look at in just a moment. Dimensions, 118mm from top to bottom, uh, just 56mm wide, and a shade under 11mm thick. It does feel really slim, and does look quite nice. I think it's an attractive looking handset has an accelerometer so that when you rotate it, it obviously rotates the display, proximity sensor I've already mentioned, digital compass and an FM radio. I think that covers really the main sort of specification. If we, uh, oh also does have uh, 2 gig of built in memory which can obviously be supplemented um, with additional uh, micro SD cards and the like so that's pretty cool. It has just powered off and the little button on the side is what we use to sort of turn the screen on and off. Sweep screen to unlock, well downwards, upwards, or downwards. Now, I don't think it's going to come out terribly well on the video, um, so I can only really tell you what the display is like. That super AMO LED display, you're really going to have to try and experience this somewhere to appreciate it. It's phenomenal. AMO LED technology is brilliant anyway. Super AMO LED is a step beyond that. Um, if you put it next to another handset, you'll probably see what I mean, um, but definitely worth checking out in store. Um, obviously, I'm shooting with quite bright lights, and if I angle, there is a bit of reflection there. But if I just get it right, um, even with the bright lighting that I have, the screen is brilliant. Um, the colours, certainly the greens there and the oranges, greens and oranges there are extremely rich, um, very well saturated, and um, frankly very good. So impressive display from the get-go. Um, let's try and take a little bit of a look around. haven't used Bad on myself before, so this uh, is completely new to me. Uh, we have seen, seems to have uh, sort of some widgets on the desktop here, so we have Maps and Gmail, we have a Google search, uh, a quick manual, uh, we have a keypad, so let's just tap that, it's it is a capacitive touch screen, so extremely sensitive, and we can go away and sort of dial our numbers, and uh, that works very well, so the sharpness and the brightness of the display does make this quite nice to use just, even from the point of view of uh, using the phone dialer. And we can pop back out of there. Contacts, well obviously I'm not going to have any, but uh, they are in contacts, in groups, in favourites, 
and we can also go back messages again we're not going to have anything on here just at the moment but it is sorted by conversation when we can go ahead and compose and uh, we have a qwerty style keyboard which is uh, pretty good looks very similar to me to the likes of uh, android in terms of the qwerty keyboard and uh, kind of works okay we get in a little click there's no um, haptic feedback now whether that's something we could um, actually switch on in the settings we'll have a look at that later and i'll talk about when we come to do the full review um, but that works quite well not really a problem if we actually rotate the the, the handset the display will rotate so we have a much larger qwerty keyboard so we can use two hands to actually tap away and it works quite well little as i say little clicking that would probably get annoying and i probably want to turn that off and i would imagine that is possible so we go back out of there and the display will rotate back saving drafts no let's not do that for now pushing the bottom at the button at the bottom actually does bring up the full menu and uh, we have three pages of um, sort of applications. So we have call logs, we have a social hub, music, internet, email, my files, calendar, uh, Samsung app, smart search, clock, camera, and settings. Well, I'm going to pop into settings, just have a quick look in there. And we'll have a look under connectivity because I want to go ahead and turn Wi Fi on. And I'm going to go and do that now. Enable the Wi Fi, and we're going to go and connect to a Wi Fi network. Now, before I actually just go ahead and press OK, I've tapped the um, network key in. I'm sure it's something that I'm going to get used to, but I'm going to mention it to you anyway, is where the little shift is for going between numbers and letters. is right next to the OK, and a couple of times when I actually was typing in the pass key, um, I managed to press OK, which clears all that. So it does take a little bit of getting used to, and I'm sure it'll be fine, but um, that's just something to sort of be aware of. And let's uh, see if we can connect. Yep, and how we have indeed connected there. So let's come back out of here, out of settings, and go into the internet. And it initializes, and we'll try to go to our website. So let's go ahead and type that in now. And I am typing a bit sideways, um, but still it's, I'm managing to do it okay, I think. So tracingmap.co.uk, and let's see what happens there. See how quickly that loads. You can see there, it's loading. Uh, worth mentioning, obviously I'm working over Wi-Fi on a broadband connection. And uh, this is uh, known as the Dolphin browser, which I believe uh, there's a version of this available for Android 2. So um, it kind of looks very familiar to me. I have actually used it on Android. So that's not loaded the entire page, um, to be fair. That's... Uh, I don't know if that's still loading. I don't think it is, but it hasn't loaded the entire page because some of the uh, graphics down the side haven't been loaded. Um, in fact, quite a lot of the graphics haven't been loaded, to be uh, to be fair. So I can use two fingers to zoom in and out and to scroll around. And it does look okay, apart from having not loaded some of the, some of the graphics on the page, whether or not that would do so if we go ahead and kind of press refresh um, I have a zoom level there, or brightness level too, so you can turn, turn the brightness in the browser up and down, that's pretty good, so let's turn it up to maximum brightness, that's probably too bright in actual fact. So uh, let's just go back, and we can open up additional tabs or additional pages, however you want to really describe it, so we can do that, and uh, we can have multiples there, looks like we probably get about six on our page, so let's a very very quick look at the web browser so we'll come back out of there and we'll go into something else so we've got email I'm not going to go ahead and set up an email account just at the moment um, but I'll do that when I come to do the full review and I'll tell you how easy it is and um, we'll show you sort of some screenshots of the mail views calendar looks quite decent that's our month view day view list view um, pretty standard and straightforward, so it does colour the weekend days differently, which is I suppose slightly different to the average, but nothing really to write home about to be honest. Also in here we've got Smart Search, My Files, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Well, let's take a look at the YouTube client and see how that works for us. And you'll notice it's going to the mobile YouTube um, rather than sort of like the full YouTube, so let's put in my alter ego and go ahead and put in unboxings 
Oops. There we go, and let's do a search for that and see what we come back with. And there we go. Samsung on your HD. Well, that's the top hit there. That's just connecting there, connected. Wait for that to spin away. Same 5.1 channel there. This is the video player. We have options down the bottom to change brightness, color tone, and details. And uh, it's not actually wanting to play the video. Let's give it a second or two longer. Oh, there we go. It has started playing. I can turn it this way to actually get it in the full portions that it's supposed to be. And, well, the video looks very good. I mean, obviously, it's a YouTube video, so there's a certain amount of compression artifacts. Let's stop that. There's a certain amount of uh, sort of compression there on artifacts and everything else, but it's pretty decent. Quite happy with that. Just pop back into the menu, see what else we've got. We've got navigation there, mini diary, we've got a calculator, daily briefing, which is kind of news, uh, instant messaging. Uh, and then we have the FM radio, the voice recorder, video player, games and more on Asphalt 5. Uh, I'm going to come back to Asphalt 5 in just a second. And uh, I'll just go back to the home screen. The home screen does have um, sort of three pages. This is kind of page one with all the widgets on it. And then we have another one with Samsung apps and a calendar. And then the final one, which is at the moment blank, uh, allows you to set up obviously your own stuff. Little button in the corner says widgets, where we can add in additional widgets or we should be able to, there we go, so we can add in additional widgets down the bottom there, network info, most of it is blah, blah blah other bits and pieces there that we can do, so we're going to leave that as it is for now, again we'll talk about that when we come to the full uh, written view, review over on site. Let's see if we can just fire up the Asphalt 5 because um, I have seen a demo of this, or we did see a demo of this at uh, MWC and it was pretty impressive, so let's just actually go into that. And as I say, I've mentioned a couple of times already, the screen is amazing quite frankly. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing more of these Super Amo LED displays in future. Um, so that's a, a fairly decent 3D rendering of a Mini. Let's do a quick race. Let's just give us an idea of uh, what the handset is capable of, I suppose. <laughs> Takes a little while to load. Tap screen. Okay. No, I am frankly absolutely useless at these uh, type of games anyway. It does look like it's using the tilt to actually work. Um, and that's pretty decent. Um, I mean, I certainly think I'd get carried away and, and enjoy playing that. And uh, I think it will certainly impress your mates down the pub that uh, you have a handset that's capable of graphics like this. Um, and gameplay like this, so um, it's pretty it's pretty impressive. Um, as I say, I absolutely suck at these kind of games, so let's just kind of skip back out of there before we before I really embarrass myself. So um, okay, that's a little quick tour of the Samsung Wave. Uh, I'll go into more detail on some of these other bits and pieces, some of the pro productivity, some of the other apps, and other bits and pieces. We're actually going. I'm going to go and set up my email and um, Twitter and Facebook client and those sorts of things. And uh, we're going to basically use it for a couple of days and see how um, how it sort of shapes up against the likes of well the iPhone, um, the X10, or even some of the HTC devices we're seeing at the moment, uh, and see what the uh, battery operating system's like. Let's say this one is a SIM-free version from Clove Technology. Uh, if you want to buy one of these, it's uh, clove.co.uk. You can pick them up for 300. I think it's 323 pounds, so not bad for a high-end handset like this. So uh, have a full review for you on tracyandmat.co.uk over the next probably couple of weeks to give it a thorough, thorough test. And uh, well, check us out, and we'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews very soon.